So this is the our last material. Okay. Can you see the uh, the one that I'm sharing on the from the textbook? Yes, sir. This is yes, sir. Hyperbolic yeah. function. Yeah. All right. Good. So this is what we aim for uh, today. The what we call the hyperbolic functions and their inverse. Okay. So uh, this is what we call the hyperbolic functions. So it's pretty much like a trick because we have cosine hyperbolic, sine hyperbolic, that H uh, correspond to what you call hyperbolic. Okay, so this hyperbolic versions of the, the trick. So you can say this one. You have tangent hyperbolic as well as the cotangent hyperbolic, secant hyperbolic, cos cosecant hyperbolic. Okay, so the way we define it, uh, for sure only different with the, with trick function is this, with cosine, so let me just, okay, this cosine, you see that this is average of a e to the x and e to the negative x, right? If you recall, I'll write down later on uh, with the, the notes, but just uh, to get new ideas. Uh, this is exponential functions, e to the x. And e to the negative x is this, right? Because e to the negative x is just one over e to the x. So whenever e to the x is large and uh, e to the negative x is small, so because it's one over, this is one, okay? When, whenever e to the x is small, so far to the left, you see e to the x is large because one over, okay? And you take the average of these two things. That means uh, sum, sum them, e to the x and e negative x, and then take the average, okay? So that's what we call cosine hyperbolic. So we'll see the reason. And if you take the difference divide by two. So that means the, this is half of the difference, okay? Half of the difference is called sine hyperbolic. Okay, so let's, let, uh, let's write, write this down. Okay, I make it more general. This one, so a to the x with a bigger than one looks like this one, okay. and if. Uh, This is e to the a, a to the x with a smaller than one. Tail positive because the, the base number is okay. Including for a, because uh, this one, if a is uh, smaller than one, okay, uh, or a between zero and one, see that. Uh, So one over a, let's define b, one over a, b is bigger than one, okay? So uh, y equals a to the x is actually one over b x, okay? So that means b over a of x with b, bigger than one, okay? So that means you get with, with negative. So that's, that's why we have this picture, okay? All right, including e to the x. Just to recall the e to the x. So 
e to the x e to the negative x right so this is one all right so and you take the average Let's call this. This is alpha. This is beta. Okay, and see what's uh, what we get here. Uh, if you uh, if you square alpha plus beta, see what what we get here. If you square this alpha, because this is beta also, this is one fourth. Okay, so take the one fourth out. You get square of e to the x, okay, and then you have uh, two times uh, two times there plus e to the negative two x, okay, from here, and then from the beta a square you get a one fourth out, and then square of this. Uh, is 2x minus uh, 2e to the x e to the negative x plus e to the negative 2x. See what we get here. Okay. Uh, this cancel out. And disappear. And then let's see. Oh, sorry. I don't mean the, this. I would like to have difference. All right, so let me just uh, uh, instead what we have is subtract. There we go. All right, so uh, this cancel, right, cancel, this cancel, okay, so what we have left is e to the x, e to the negative x, this is one, this is one, okay, so uh, this is two, minus minus two, this is four, divided by four, that's one. Okay, so uh, let's see, uh, what else can we, uh, can we find? Uh, for example, um, So that's one reason why we call this. Okay, so let's uh, call this alpha is like this, this the cosine hyperbolic of x. The beta is sine hyperbolic of x. Cosine hyperbolic is sine hyperbolic. Well, we call it cosine and sine because like a trig, trig functions because it behaves like a trig functions so uh com this compare comparison we have uh cosine square x plus okay. with uh, this you have cosine hyperbolic Minus, okay, so you have this uh, minus example, this minus. So is that any 
anything anything else that we uh, that we should implement. So let's and also define uh, alpha over beta. This would be our tangent hyperbolic. So it is a cosine, sorry, the other way around. Sine over cosine. Okay. So it's uh, the way how we define trig functions. And we'll see it is tangent is sine over cosine, hyperbolic. Quatangent is cosine over sine. Secant is one over cosine. And we get this one. That's easy to verify. Uh, and let's compute the derivative. Where is it? Okay, so what's dx of, for example, sine hyperbolic of x? Okay, let's go back to the its definitions. This difference, half of the difference. Okay, of course the one half is still there. Okay, and the derivative of this is remain e to the x, but derivative of this. But uh, by uh, chain rule, it becomes positive. And but that becomes the, the average of e to the x and it's uh, e to the negative x. So that means this is the cosine hyperbolic. Okay, so similar to the, what we have in, in trigonometry, derivative of sine is cosine. But the other way around, let's see. This is the, the difference. So we computing e to the x uh, plus negative x to two. See, uh, over two, it's one half remains. E to the x, of course, is to the x, but this one's derivative e to the x is negative e to the x. Sorry, right? so it is sine. Okay, so in fact, it is uh, easier in this case because you don't have to worry about sign. Sorry, the sign for this uh, negative sign. Everything is positive. Okay, sign becomes sine hyperbolic, become cosine hyperbolic, and then cosine hyperbolic becomes sine again. So this, and what about tangent? Well, tangent. That is uh, tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, derivative of sine cosine and times the cosine in the denominator. Okay, so another cosine, so this square. Then you have a sine times the derivative cosine which is sine so you have uh, there and defines by cosine uh, square okay so what is this well you can say this is a cosine square minus sine square well we'll derive that one that's one okay is one over cosine hyperbolic, but one over cosine hyperbolic is secant. So this becomes secant hyperbolic square of x. Recall x and x is secant square of x. Sorry. So, very similar to this one. Okay. Uh, 
in fact, if you look at the our exercise, let's go to the exercise before. Just to show you the properties. Okay, look at uh, problem one to twelve. Okay and try to compare that to say not one to, to, to 12 five to <coughs> sorry five to 12. <laughs> look this is sign of thumb of angle okay so you see this is sine sine cosine plus uh, the only difference with trig function is this one. Okay, so what what sine minus sine uh, of uh, difference? Sine hyperbolic. Well, you have this. Okay. In opposite to the the sine of the the trig functions. So cosine. What about cosine? Well, you see similar thing except you don't have negative, but positive. Okay, what about tangent? Well, you see the same, same formulas, except for the sign. Uh, sign double angle, see, the sign. Well, this is the same thing. What about cosine double angle? Except you have this. Okay, so that's, uh, one reason why we call this function as a uh, like a trig functions but the hyperbolic version of that why this hyperbolic well because the sorry let's go back let's just go back and forth that just to show you the motivation of calling this hyperbolic i guess i Okay, so recall what we call the hyperbolic, uh, the graph of hyperbola. So if you have an x squared plus y squared equals one, this is a circle. But if you uh, make the, this negative, x squared minus y squared equals one, you get a Actually, you get this one also, right? Because this is a pair of a a pair of graph, left and right. Okay, so we consider only the right. Uh, okay, so this is the graph, the x square minus y squared equals one. This hyperbola. Okay. So this graph. So in trig functions. A cosine square plus sine square equals one. So you have this circle. But here we have this hyperbola. Okay, so that's the reason why we call this the, this is the uh, hyperbolic uh, trigonometry functions. So in short, hyperbolic functions. See, they correspond to this uh, hyperbola as opposed to circular thing in trigonometry right so that's why we we call it that okay questions up to this point but why we call it the like a trig functions except we put a another term hyperbola hyperbolic Okay, so that's about the, and uh, what about the parity? Parity is about odd even. Uh, parity is something being uh, two states, always on, off, if you think about talking about switches or uh, if it's, you call it a binary number, it is between zero and one, that's parity, something about two states. 
uh, odd event, same, so it is you know, talking about parity. All right. Um, what about cosine? Cosine hyperbolic x. Okay, so let's uh, let's check this one. So this is e to the x. This is the uh, let's call it f of x. So what about if we plug in negative x? Okay, so it becomes e to the negative x plus negative negative. A, that's the same thing. Okay. So the negative is still same as the positive one. So this one, this is odd functions. even factor. And if you deal with this one, sometimes people uh, call it stage. Okay. So it's a hyperbolic sign. Stage, cosh. Stage and cosh. There, half of the difference. So if you plug in negative x, see what we get here. Uh, so sine of negative x, you get, okay, so e to the negative x minus there, e to the negative, become plus x over two. Okay. So this is negative. this the so key of x this is odd functions so that's the same as the uh, cosine trig uh, regular cosine and sine sine is a uh, odd functions cosine is even functions okay but if you look at the graph Sign is just the average. If you take the average of these two, you sum them up and then uh, take the, the one half of this. Well, you see something that looks like this one, probably. There you go. It's metric. So this is e to the x, it is e to the negative x. And the blue, the green one is average. So this is cosine. So no periodic. It's because it is uh, nor asymptotic. It is going. Uh, it's almost like a parabola. Okay. But it's uh, it rises exponentially. Okay, not periodic. Okay. So it's not like the cosine regular cosine, which is which is periodic. Okay, so graph. And what about the? Uh, the sine, sine hyperbolic. Well, sine hyperbolic looks like uh, must be the the uh, sorry.
So e to the x, you subtract e to the negative x. Of course, this is small compared to this. And then take one half of this. This is one, so equally one. <laughs> So the difference is zero, but half of this, okay? This is bigger than this one, so it is positive. There it goes, something that looks like this one. That's, uh, of course, this is what's called sign hyperbolic. This is sign hyperbolic. Okay, it is symmetric. Uh, looks like a x to say x cube, but it rises almost uh, say exponentially. It's an odd one. Not a periodic functions. So you 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 lose your periodicity. So there is no uh, periodic periodic. Okay. All right. So uh, now you see that because sine hyperbolic is a is a monotone function, it has inverse. Uh, while the cosine, well, you we should restrict because this is decreasing and then increasing. So to make it monotone, you have to restrict either using the, the negative, x negative or x positive. If you restrict, then it becomes monotone. Then it has inverse. So we restrict uh, hyperbolic functions. Uh, monotone okay. So for example, uh, sine hyperbolic x, this is already monotone. So we have uh, inverse exists. But uh, cosine hyperbolic, okay, restrict to there. Okay, so this monotone, because that's increasing, See? increasing for x uh, positive. Okay, so in this case, cosine hyperbolic inverse exists. Okay. That's the... All right, so let's... Uh, let's uh, assume that all the... Uh, the... Uh, inverse exists. So we can talk about signs inverse cosines uh, hyperbolic inverse tangent hyperbolic inverse sequence hyperbolic inverse and all that so assume uh, we can restrict so Hyperbolic, hyperbolic, 
toxic and hyperbolic for the cotangent cos all exist okay the question is what is derivative So I just mentioned two uh, yeah, I'll write C. So this is an example. For example, if we write y equals sine hyperbolic. Okay. So that means if you write solve for x. Okay, so apply sine hyperbolic to both sides. Okay, to both sides. Uh, left hand side becomes sine y sinh. And here the sine I will cancel the sine inverse. Just x. Okay, as usual. Take the x. Okay, this sine become cosine because of the chain rule we get y squared sorry y prime and then this is just one okay if you solve it y prime that is one over cosine y okay uh, but the thing here is that uh, we don't have this a a triangular diagram like we have for trig functions because for for trig functions if we write them something like this that means y is an angle okay if we talk about uh, hyperbolic functions okay hyperbolic function takes a, a hyperbolic function takes a real number okay, to another real number positive now. Okay. So it's not angle. So this is what I mean. So if if you trick this is angle. This is real number. But if you deal with hyperbolic you feed in real number. And out real number. Okay, so we don't have triangular diagram for hyperbolic functions. Mentioned this one when we had yesterday. See. This is what I meant by triangular diagram, because Y can be considered as angle. Other diagram, which was, I think there is another one. In here, this triangular here, triangular diagram. Okay. We don't have such a thing for hyperbolic functions. Okay. So, but recall that we can always use this one. So, better use different ladder, not to confuse this yx here. Okay. So, cosine is. One plus. Okay, so because both are positive, cosine is positive. Take the square root. What you have is that 
this is 1 over square root of 1 plus Sorry, still y. Still in terms of y. But sine hyperbolic y is x. So that means this is 1 plus x squared. Okay. And if you recall trig functions. You have y equals sorry. Let me just write down directly here. Dx of uh, sine inverse of x is one over square root of one minus x squared. See comparison. The signs different. Whenever you have plus, we got minus. Minus we got plus. Okay, and one more is tangent. What about tangent? We think of tangent hyperbolic inverse. All right, so let's compute this. If you have y equal tangent hyperbolic inverse, okay, so that means x is. Uh, you apply tangent hyperbolic both sides. Okay. And hyperbolic of 10 inverse. So that 10 and 10 inverse cancel. Take the dx. Okay, you see this. All right, 10 hyperbolic becomes secant square. Times derivative of this. Okay, just one again. So y prime is one over second uh, second uh, hyperbolic of x. But one over second is cosine. Second cosine. And recall that, uh, sorry, this is not x because this is y. This is just a arithmetic one divided by secant square y. Okay. One over secant is cosine. Okay. Let's see how is it relate y and x. Here we have another. Cosine square is one plus sine. Okay. So but cosine square y is one plus this is just x square. Okay. Mm. the formula oh. 
that's the thing that's quite complicated actually. This one here. Pause. Derivative is this one here. So how to get those? Uh, Recall how to, to compute this derivative of tangent inverse. Um, one minus this one plus. Okay, so. Instead, I have to, okay. Uh, what kind of equation you re can you recall about tangent and secant? What I have added, not about hyperbolic, but trig. What kind of formula you, uh, what kind of identity you can recall about uh, tangent and secant involving secant and tangent. Anyone recall? Is it the uh, ten squared theta plus one equals second? Square theta. That's one. Yeah. B uh, equals to one plus n. n. So we have uh, something similar for the uh, for secant. Okay. Uh, what? But we suspect this plus. Right, not t, t because we 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 miss t with plus sign. I say alpha. Okay, we suspect this would be different. Okay, so let's compute this one. Uh, so secant square hyperbolic. Okay, so that's one over cosine, right? So one over cosine, uh, cosine is, so we, we can say this is e to x plus e to the, right? Because you just refer to this, right? So that's one, and then so this is four. Of course, that's easy. Uh, we compute the, the right hand side. What about one over uh, tangent square? One plus tangent hyperbolic square. Okay, so one plus what about this? This is sine over cosine hyperbolic. Okay, what about the sign? Okay, yes, let's square it. So e to the x minus e to the negative x. Okay. Yeah. Square over two times one over cosine. So the x. So this sine square over this is one over cosine. If you multiply this out, okay, so they will uh, this disappear, cancel, 
and you have this times this square root. Okay, so this like e to the But what is this? This is sine over cosine. The two disappear. Uh, one. Sorry. But if you break it down, uh, what you get is this is the. Minus should be okay. Try to recognize this one. This is the uh, supposedly the negative secant square. All right, so it's one minus. So you have I have X plus this one what you get here is this is secant capital x squared yeah. one over you have a lot of cancellations right so e to the x squared minus this then it disappear same thing e to the negative x squared the only thing that uh, uh, that doesn't appear if you simplify this, you get two e to the x times e to the negative x. This is just one. Here you get another two. Okay. So e to the x plus e to the negative x squared. So you have four. That's the same as two there. That is the secret. All right, so let's after this one, then this is just okay. So second is one minus tangent. While tangent is x, okay. so that's why it becomes one over one minus x squared. If you recall the trick, or trick, uh, and in first x you get one over one plus x square here minus okay so between regular trick and hyperbolic trick uh, the identities almost always differ by uh, that different inside whatever plus become sign become minus minus become plus Okay, just one more uh, what's the use of the, for this a hyperbolic thing? For the hyperbolic thing is that we want to compute uh, integral. integral. 
because the integral of one over one minus x squared like this uh, x okay. now becomes derivative of tangent let me just call this so if you compute dx you get one over so if you going there it, okay that means if you integrate this one, you get this a tangent hyperbolic inverse. Okay. In comparison to if you have dx over one plus x squared, you have ten without. Uh, without hyperbolic, okay? okay? And another thing is that if you recall that dx over that you get sine. Then for plus sine, you get hyperbolic okay so that's the difference between uh, using hyperbolic and uh, or not one example let's see one integral so this is plus example that I would like to do One here. The integral of u equals square root of v, then u becomes, say, the derivative. So v one half, so it becomes one half v v v. But this is exactly that one. Okay, so it become cosine u cosine hyperbolic the u okay this comes sine that is sine square root of d plus 
the okay, you don't have to worry about the the negative. Okay. So let me just now uh, one example for this. Let's see what I can recall. One minus this. Okay. Sorry, let's do this one. Okay. That example is this. Uh, the number might be nasty, but we'll see. Okay, so let's this one. Let's do this one. Three minus five x, two x. This, or just without the two. I'll be okay with this. Okay. So we'll see, let's do, what about this one here? So this is three, uh, this is minus uh, three, five plus eight squared, okay? So this one here, uh, as usual, we use a completions. Okay, but then we have to subtract 25 over uh, 4. Okay, up to this point, are you, are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's, so 3 plus become, this will become plus, right? Minus, I can say this is there. Okay, so this is 12, 12, uh, 37. See, that's why I mentioned that the number might be nasty. Okay, so that's why this is a. Okay, and we let. Now let u equals. Let me just do one more thing here. 37 over 4, factor this out, 1 minus, uh, to divide this one, okay. x plus 5 half divides by square root of, okay, now we let this, equals this one here, x plus 5 halves over square root of 37 over 4. Okay, so what is du here? That is du is uh, dx over All right, so the x is the one. Now the point is that the original uh, functions, then that is the same as this one here. This is one over one over. One plus u square. Okay, and the x is just the u times this. The 
tab situations. Modify by this. Okay, so let's take this out. Uh, so you get another. Okay, so defined by this. Okay, so let's do this later. Multiply this out. This is a square. Okay, so this square root of four should be seven. This is the one. one sorry, this is one, but one minus there. One minus. So this is the tangent hyperbolic okay. which is what's this tangent you find that u is x and half over Okay, so the main reason, one of the main reasons why we need the hyperbolic functions for integrations is to deal with this negative sign here. If you have plus sign, then you have a regular tangent, hyperbolic, uh, tangent inverse. But when you have minus sign, you have tangent hyperbolic. Okay, questions? It's slightly outside the, the scope, actually, because we, we get back to this uh, in the first chapter of the uh, math two. So next way, sir. So method of integrations. Okay, let's uh, take a break for five minutes. Um,